Thomas the Tank Engine had been boasting in the sheds. I'm the most useful engine here. You'd all be hopeless without me around. Toby ignored Thomas. He knew that Thomas could be cheeky and vain. But Percy was offended. Pa! You're certainly not the most useful engine. Not even on the branch line. Toby or me are much more useful than you. You might be the one whose name's in his spotlight. But Toby and me are the ones who get the jobs done, Percy remarked. What rubbish, replied Thomas. No one said a word for the rest of the night. A few days later, Percy was bringing empty stone trucks from the harbour. He was tired of his quarrel with Thomas and wanted to be friends again. He had had a good day and was feeling extra pleased with himself. He was so busy thinking about how he would tell Thomas and Toby about his expert handling of the trucks that he forgot to keep a good look at. Too late he saw a broken branch hanging over the line straight in front of him. Oh, ah! He groaned. He tried to stop but his brains wouldn't hold him. Ouch! He exclaimed a moment later. The branch hit a smoke box, broke away, and crashed to the ground. Percy was more startled than hurt, but his front was still sore when he reached the shed. It's your own fault, said Thomas unsympathetically. You should keep a better lookout. I've no patience with you. Pah, retorted Percy heavily. He forgot his good resolution and talked to Toby for the rest of the evening. Percy didn't speak to Thomas the next day either. I say, Toby, he said in the shed that evening. What's a drip? Do you know? Toby pondered. It's when rain comes through a hole in your cab, and Fireman hasn't got time to mend it, he decided at last. <laughs> That's silly, objected Percy. I heard a boy on a platform call his friend one this afternoon. I'm sure he couldn't have come through a hole in my cab, he added earnestly. Thomas was tired of being ignored. That's different, he interrupted loftily. The boy just thought his friend was being a coward or silly or a spoil sport. Percy thought about this. So if... He suggested reflectively. If you stop me from doing something nice, would you be a drip, Thomas? You're the drip, answered Thomas crossly. Now go to sleep like a sensible engine and stop talking nonsense. Percy was offended. Instead of going to sleep, he became even more determined to pay Thomas out. Next day, Henry's train was late at the junction. When Thomas set off along the valley, he was trying to make up for lost time. Suddenly, there was a loud bang. Something hard hit the bottom of his left hand water tank. Ouch! exclaimed Thomas and stopped. As he did so, he found water splashing cold against his wheels. One of your side rods is broken, said his driver. It swung up and punctured your tank. We'll have to get out. At Fargo, while Percy was shunting, the station master came up. Leave those trucks, please, Percy, he said. Thomas has got it all in his water tank. There's water dripping everywhere and he can't get home on his own. Percy was still cross with Thomas. I won't go, he said. Thomas called me a drip. Let him jolly well stay in it and drip himself. But what about Annie Clarabo and the passengers? Reminded Percy's driver. Do they deserve to stay out all night too? Percy was sorry at once. I forgot them, he said. We must rescue them in case they turn into drips too. And he hurried away. He found Thomas near the river. Everyone was glad to see him, and the passengers thanked him for coming. I'm sorry I was rude, he said Thomas as Percy helped him back to the shed. That tank of mine turned me into a bigger drip than we expected, didn't it? Can we be friends again, please? Percy was delighted to agree.